Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. How are you doing? Hopefully you're well, because today we're going to talk about 15 epic champions added actually this year 2021 has been a huge year for epic champions has it not these 15 epic champions are better outclass some of the older legacy legendary champions inside the game so without further ado let's go ahead and jump into it these are 15 of my favorite epic champions well these are my 15 favorite epic champions added this year however there's probably going to be about like three or four or five or ten snubs Man, they've like really stepped up their game on epics, huh? Wish I could say the same thing about rares. There's really not been that many good rares added this year, has there? I am fantastic. I am a professional. I am awesome. I am fabulous. I am cute. Who are you? You. No, not me, you. Yes, I am you. Just answer the damn questions. Who are you? I have told you. Are you deaf? No, you is blind. Have you guys, you know, experienced any rares, uncommons? Because I have not. I talked about it in uh, in a video a few days ago. I'll link for you guys in the show notes below. So let's start out with dwarves, right? So there's a few really good dwarves out of this here. Even looking at the list, there's a couple that aren't even on my list that are really, really uh, seriously capable champions. But Rune Keeper Dazdurk is going to be the first champion that we talk about today. This dude's a beast. I want to draw your attention to a couple stats. First off, right? Tw over 20k HP. This dude has over 1200, 1250 defense, and he's very fast at 105 speed. You can use him against the Nether Spider, against the Frost Spider in every single dungeon. He is Void Affinity in Clan Boss and in the Arena. So a lot of these champions, I'm going to tell you where I use all these champions or where you can use if you build them. Uh, really, really solid. Has a leech on the A1, helps out for Clan Boss right there. His damage based on defense. His A2, increased attack, turn meter fill 25% on 3 turn cooldown, and then boom, he has a cleanse as well, uh, then a heal on a four turn cooldown, great for clan boss, really great for everywhere, and again, he's fast, great base stats, this dude is a guy that a lot of people slept on early, early on. Now, the next one is a guy that pretty much nobody slept on, it's Geomancer, man, the guy with the hat, the guy with the big black hat. <laughs> This guy's insane. Clan boss, spider especially, dragon, eternal dragon, and magma dragon is where I use this guy. He's insane. He has decreased accuracy on the A1 on an AoE. On the A2, he has remove all buffs from a target enemy, then attacks them, steals all buffs if they're under HP burn, raises the cooldown of his A3 if it kills an enemy under an HP burn. His A3 fully depletes the target's turn meter, fills the champion's turn meter, but by the amount the target loses, and and then has a 100% chance of placing an HP burn and a weekend on the on a debuff, excuse me, on the target for three turns on a three turn cooldown. So he's got that HP burn up all the time. And then check this out on this passive Stone Guard decreases the damage all allies receive by 15% and deflects that damage onto each enemy under HP burn. That is the magic of his kit, guys, because he's dealing. Just an, if you guys have Geomancer, if you've run him in Spider, or if you saw my guide on Geomancer, you know, you know, this guy is incredible. One of my personal favorite, most favorite epic champions added uh, this year. Let's go to a champion that probably nobody else has on, on their list right now. And it is none other than a guy that I've talked about a few times here on the channel. And again, a lot of you guys, I've never seen anybody disagree with me on Jiskar the Seguiled. But I don't know, man. I think it's because he got a nerf before he was even released. But he's still really solid, right? Decreased attack, the big version, at a 75% land rate on his A1. You love to see that decreased attack on the A1. On the A2, an AoE provoke with a shield on himself, 75% on 3 turn cooldown. On the A3, he has increased defense and increased attack. All allies on a three turn cooldown. He brings both of those really important kind of OG buffs to your squad. And then his passive, this passive is amazing, right? right? Fills the champion's turn meter by 15% whenever they're attacked by an enemy under provoke or an increase attack buff. So under a provoke debuff or an increase attack buff, 
He's gonna be, again, filling his turn meter every single time by 15%, and he's landing the provokes. That's a beautiful synergy. He has almost 1,500 base defense. This guy is a really, really good and often overlooked champion, kind of like Runekeeper Dazdurk. Number four is gonna be Ursula the Mourner. So Ursula is a really solid champion as well. She's, I mean, she has one of the best revivals in the game. A2, she has an AoE with decreased attack and increased attack on a three-turn cooldown. A million books. She loves to read a million books, but whatever. You ever think about space? Is it really endless? I mean, if you had a spaceship, could you go fly it and fly it through space forever? Why don't you give it a shot? A3 revives all dead allies, 75% HP, fills their turn meter by 50%, places increase in defense and strengthen on all allies for three turns. Thank you very much, Ursula the Mourner. You are a legendary champion. You are a legendary champion. Has a great speed aura for Doom Tower battles as well. She's amazing. Let's go back to the beginning of the year here, guys. Way back in the beginning. You guys know he was one of my most wanted champions for a while. And where the heck are you? Where the heck? Oh, there he is. Deke! It's Deacon Armstrong, man. The turn meter specialist with the decreased defense. I'm using this dude now against Dark Fey, man. He's very, very good. By the way, Ursula, Clan Boss, Every Dungeon, Eternal Dragon, Magma, uh, Magma Dragon, excuse me, and Frost Spider. Uh, with Jizzcard, I'm using him in Ice Golem, Dragon, Eternal Dragon, and Magma Dra uh, Dragon. When I say I'm using him, I mean, you know, hypothetically, that's where they're best served. I don't use them on every single areas on all these champions. But these are where I would call them all you know, well above average or S tier, right? So Deacon Armstrong, basically clan boss, every single dungeon provided the affinity is correct. Uh, you can use Deke in Frost Spider, Magma Dragon, and Internal Dragon as well. On the A3 here, he has the, the turn meter fill, decreased turn meter on enemies, and then grants an extra turn. He also has speed in all battles by 19%, man. Deke. He gets the job done. Has a leech on his A1 as well, man. I love Deacon Armstrong. All right, next up is going to be another kind of, man, I call old school, but, you know, in terms of the champions we're talking about today, he's kind of an old school champion. It's Duck the Pierce, man. This guy, I, I don't know, like, he gets a lot of love, but not enough love in my opinion. He's good on the clan boss, good on the griffin. He's good on Frostbiter. He's good in uh, basically every dungeon, depending on the affinity. And in the arena. I use him in the arena on my free-to-play team. He has a decreased accuracy on the A1. On the A2, an AoE attack damage based on defense. Easy to build this champion, right? And then he has a uh, decreased attack and decreased defense on a three-turn cooldown. A la Stag Knight, kind of, right? Uh, and then he has a provoke on one enemy, has a chance at putting it on uh, two random enemies uh, as well. Reflect damage, unkillable. Some people turn this ability off. I tend to use it on my free to play. I need him for that support as well, but you know, to each their own. Either way, he's a very, very good champion. I'm gonna talk about, am I going too much out of limb here, guys, by saying this is the strongest champion added, strongest epic added this year? If I had to make the call, I would just say he is the strongest epic added this year, and it's Irogrim. This dude is insane. He's insane. You can use him Clam Boss, Nether Spider, uh, Bommel, the Bomb Boss, the new Bomb Boss, Frost Spider, Eternal Dragon, every single dungeon in the game, dude. He has a three-time hitter with poison on his A1, Giant Slayer Mastery, uh, removes all debuffs from an ally, then heals him by 40% on a three-turn, and then he has three poisons and two continuous heals. Three poisons on all enemies for two turns, also places two continuous heals on all allies for two turns on a three-turn cooldown. Dude, he's like Battle Kazar meets Steel Skull. Very, very good champion. Has speed in all battles as if his kit couldn't get any better. This guy is the real deal, man. Eurogrim, if you are lucky enough to pull him, saluting to you, hats off, congratulations. You just pulled an absolute monster champion inside this game. Strong, powerful men like myself or others very similar to me. For example, Hercules, the Highlander, or... Uh... God. Actually, let's stay in the Ogren tribe, guys. Man, huge, huge honorable mention. I kind of looking at my list here. I think I should probably just take somebody off. I should take somebody off because Siege Hulk has to be on it. All right, you're going to get a quick bonus champion. Nobody, nobody, nobody tell anybody that the title of the video is, is, is technically clickbait now because there's going to be 16 champions because I love Siege Hulk, man. I don't know why some people hating on Siege Hulk on my video that I did on the guide that I did on this champion. I have no idea. He's a beast, man. If you're looking for a Herndig mini, 
a guy that can drop the decreased defense, do an insane amount of damage on a single target here. He has all the increased attack buffs that you need. Increased crit rate, increased crit damage on himself, increased attack on himself, and AoE decreased defense. And he's just, he's such a damage carry, man. He's insane. Uh, then he deserves a spot on your team. I love this champion, man. I really do. Anywhere, again, kind of like Duck, right? He's much squishier than Duck, right? He's 760 on the defense. I guess that's why he gets some hate. 15k on the HP. If you can keep him alive... You're, you're walking into a nuker and a uh, debuffer on the same team. But I really got to give the title to Ugo, man. Ugo was the very, or woman, Ugo was the very, very beginning of the year. And she has just one of the best debuff abilities in the game. On this uh, A2, an AoE attack, you're attacking all enemies, right? Damage based on attack. Uh, a healthy amount of defense for an attack, you know, base champion, right? Uh, 1250. Uh, a lot of HP, almost 20k, right? She's fast, 102. She's got decreased defense, and then she's got block buffs, right? Block buffs at a 75% land rate or even more, depending on how many uh, debuffs are, excuse me, the chance increase for each enemy alive, okay? So for each enemy alive, that chance goes up. Uh, and the leech on the A1, man, and the heals, and the debuff removals, man. Ugo does it all. She's insane. Clan boss, arena, every dungeon in the game. Nether spider, eternal dragon, griffin, uh, frost spider. That's, you can use her almost anywhere, man. Ugo, very, very, very good. All right. Speaking of very, very, very good, Vogoth, maybe not as versatile as uh, Ugo. Clan boss, arena. You can see Vogoth all the time in uh, in Platinum Arena. A little bit less so recently, but still an incredible arena, especially an arena defense-based champion. You got every dungeon, the weakest being Dragon, but the proper affinity for Dragon 25. So for progression on Dragon 25, you could do a lot worse. Magma, Eternal, and Griffin. You can use Vogoth. Wow, Vogoth is very good. Uh, good Giant Slayer Mastery for Vogoth as well. Three hitter on the A1. We have an AoE Provoke on the A2. We also have a chance of placing decrease attack for two turns on targets to receive the priv uh, provoke thank you very much right and then really it's uh this passive right whenever this champion is attacked heals all allies like 50 percent of the damage received 25 percent against bosses wow also has a leech passive as well a very very uh overlooked at first but i think the word is out now on vogoth what about you guys any of you max out vogoth a very very good champion inside this game so uh, let's talk about ally attack, man. We needed a really, really solid ally attack champion, and I always go into orcs for some reason. I have no idea why, but it's Fat Man. Where are you, Fat Man? Can you people not see me? In front of my face. There you are, right in front of my cursor. Fucker in the fat. Uh, on he has decreased uh, defense on his A1. He has this cool passive where his allies will absorb some of his damage because he's a little squishy here at 14k HP. But then he has increased crit rate, crit damage on all allies except himself. And then the ally attack on a four turn cooldown. The best epic ally attack inside the game is Fokker in the Fat. And he was added this year. Good for Clan Boss, for Dragon, uh, for Fire Knight, Ice Golem. I don't really use him on Spider. But the other three dungeons, you can definitely use them there. Eternal Dragon and Griffin as well. Not the, the two newest Doom Tower bosses, but the two other addition Doom Tower bosses uh, outside the four OGs. Very good on ally, or very, uh, I guess say, uh, susceptible to ally attack teams. So consider building an ally attack team starring the Fat Man, Farrakhan the Fat. All right, let's go on to the next champion. It's going to be... It's going to be Godseeker Aniri. So Godseeker, very, very good support champion. You can use her in Clan Boss, Ice Golem, Magma Dragon, uh, in the two other, the, the same two champions we just talked about, uh, Eternal Dragon and the Griffin, right, as a support champion. She has on the A1, a heal. Okay, small heal. She has an AoE with another heal on the A2. Increase the duration of all the buffs on allies and decrease the buffs on enemies on that ability, right? Provided you build her with enough accuracy. Kind of a pain because this is the only thing in her kit that needs accuracy. But whatever, beggars can't be choosers. On a four turn cooldown, we have a revive a dead ally, 50% HP, turn meter 50%, and then resets the cooldown of all their skills. It's a very unique revival, a very good revival ability for single target on a four turn. For single targets, you pretty much always want their uh, revival to be on a four turn cooldown. 
you know, unless it's doing something absolutely incredible. But really, for single targets, we're looking for a four turn cooldown. Uh, but Guardian Angel, she has another four turn cooldown passive built in, increases the amount of healing all allies received by 10%. Kind of cool to pair her with like a Vrask or a passive healer like Sylvia the Drakes. Really nice healing synergy there, right? Uh, you know, Doom Priest, right? Uh, if an ally is about to get killed, preempts that hit, puts a revive on deck. Thank you very much, Godseeker Aniri. Very, very good champion. Next up is going to be one of my other favorites. I think my favorite's Urgrim, Geomancer, and this champion, man. I did a guide on him. I love Magnar. Magnar is a damage dealing beast. I really love using this guy in secret rooms and Doom Tower and in the arena. It's nice to have an HP based nuker in the arena because he can stay alive, right? You can put him on a go first team or on a go second team in the arena. To me, he's kind of like an arena specialist or anywhere you need a lot of damage from a champion who, you know, it's hard to kill because you're building him with a ton of HP. He has 1k base defense, not bad, 100 base speed and 21k base HP. This ability is A2, just hits very, very hard. Uh, you know, plays an extra hit on enemies without HP burn uh, debuffs. So you put him with a burner, you can place a, a stun potentially. If you place him without a burner on the same team, you're getting two massively hard hitting abilities. Fan the Flames, I'm not a huge fan of, but it doesn't really matter. It has a debuff spread that does not spread, you know, the most powerful debuffs. Uh, his passive, this champion heals by 1% of their mass HP every time anyone in the battle takes damage from an HP burn debuff. Kind of cool passive there. It's not a game changer, but it's a nice kind of synergistic ability that keeps him fully healed up throughout the duration of the battle if he's paired with a burner on the same team. Very cool champion, a big fan of Magnar. All right, we have a few more left here, guys. Let's go through them quickly. You guys know, back at the beginning of the year, I was kind of on the fence on Rector Drath, and boy was I, well, I shouldn't say wrong, I was kind of keen on Rector Draft, but boy, she's amazing. 109 speed, very, very fast. Uh, good support stats as well. On A1, she has decreased attack, the big version. Nice to have that on the A1. I always look for that on champions, especially support champions. It's nice to have that, right? We have an AoE heal. We have a perfect veil, continuous heal after healing. Uh, you know, this veil synergy with the passive is pretty incredible. Whenever an ally under a veil or perfect veil gets a turn, heals on my 10% of their max HP also has resistance increase. That's really nasty. Everybody's gonna be veiled up, but she's gonna be healing them every single time they get a turn. Very, very cool. She deals out a ton of healage. Her Vrask in like Sky Touch Shaman, you know, Vogoth, sometimes Silver Drake, depends, but these these champions are some of the best healers inside the entire game, and Retro Draft is right there in that conversation, guys. The Revival, five turn cooldown, revives a single ally, 60% HP, turn here by 60%, perfect veil on them for three turns. Okay, I just told you we're looking for a four turn. Oh, it is a four turn, my bad. Four turn cooldown, single target in a very, very good revival, because that perfect veil is gonna keep them protected from everything outside AoE attacks, and even AoE attacks, it's gonna mitigate uh, damage resistance by 15%. So Retro Draft, a very, very good support champion. Scarab King, Frost Spider, Magma Dragon, uh, dra regular dragon, Ice Golem, Arena. Arena, you see her all the time on Arena Defense, right? Arena Defense, very tricky to deal with, and she is Force Affinity for all those Trundas out there, right? Uh, Eternal, uh, or the Griffin and the Eternal Dragon. You're using Retro Draft pretty much everywhere. I wanna go to two more champions. They're both Shadowkin, right? One of them is a little bit more niche. Jenbo the Dishonored. I had to include him on the list, guys, because this guy is a nuker built for the arena or anywhere you just need a lot of damage. He has an AoE attack here that hits very hard in three turn cooldown uh, on the A2. What does it say that this attack cannot be resisted on critical hits? This effect cannot be resisted, meaning we have the decrease the duration of all buffs by one turn. As long as he's critting there, it can't be resisted. You love to have that, right? And then increase crit rate, increase crit damage. Three turns grants an extra turn. So you open up with this ability, the A3. You go on to the heavy nuke on the A2. Hey, you have to go against an unkillable, maybe? Uh, don't worry about it. Ignore unkillable buffs when attacking under increase attack. Immune to decrease attack debuffs. Very, very cool ability. Very cool champion overall. Just make sure you have like an Arbiter or an increase attack champion going before him. And the last up is going to be... 
man, there's a lot of good champions. I'm tempted to even include, you know, Geary just because he can solo the bomb champion who's the hardest, most annoying champion in all of Doom Tower. But I'm actually going to give it to Tur Turagi the Frog, right? Another champion, I would say, probably four, five, six, maybe seven champions who might have surprised some of you guys. But this is definitely one of them as well. Good for the clan boss, good for all dungeons, save Spider, good for Scarab King, and for Magma Dragon, right? On the A1, decrease attack on the A2. We have Provoke for one turn on an AoE. 50% chance, but that chance increases by 5% for each debuff on the enemy team. That's pretty solid, right? HP-based champion again here. There's a lot of good HP-based champions added to the game like Magnar, uh, Taragi the Frog, and look at that HP, almost 22k HP. It's a lot of HP. Has a shield buff equal to 50% of this champion's max HP and an ally protect on all allies. So we're getting a three-turn shield as well in his kit. Uh, also has a heal on himself, 25%, 30% reflect damage, and the heal increases by 2.5% for each poison debuff on the enemy. He's great for clan bosses. I uh, clan bosses well i guess maybe hydra clan boss in about a year from now and then the passive when attacked has a 50 percent chance of placing a big version of poison debuff on the attacker for two turns and it occurs once per hit so we can deal a ton of damage on top of everything else that he's doing i really like taragi the frog i think his damage output will surprise a lot of you guys who give him a try so guys i hope you enjoyed this video let me know who i left off the list i know there's a few champions probably like i said like five maybe 10 who probably could have been on this list but uh you know for whatever reason i didn't include them because i don't want to be here for 25 minutes or 45 minutes or an hour and a half you guys know how i like to ramble uh with that in mind let's go ahead and wrap the video there thank you for watching all the way till the end guys appreciate you and as always take care guys